In this session, the first speaker will tell us a game-changing perspective. The speaker is visiting professor of Seoul National University, Hyunshil An, and the topic of this session is evolution of the digital content industry. Please welcome the speaker with a big round of applause. I'm an economist. At first, I didn't understand why the Korea Copyright Commission invited me to this conference as a speaker. But thank you so much for having me. And Jin Young Lee from Stanford, she asked us to summarize my presentation in one sentence. But I couldn't do it because my presentation slides are too long. So I apologize. I think it's my fault. The title of my presentation today is A Game-Changing Perspective, the Ev Evolution of the Digital Content Industry. I heard this is an international conference, so I thought I should write my, my presentation in English, and the commission translated my slides into Korean. So I don't know which one is right, but once again, thank you so much for providing my presentation in both English and Korean. Let me begin my presentation. Maybe my presentation is a little bit off the point of the previous speakers and the next speakers, but I hope you enjoy my perspective. This is a book called Karl Marx Capitalism. Some people say this changed the course of human history. Capitalism, socialism, and democracy, these topics were dealt by Schumpeter. And he presents a little different perspective from Karl Marx. But what's the difference? between the two authors when they look at capitalism. This is my personal perspective. I think Karl Marx advocated a destructive creation, while Joseph Schumpeter argued creative destruction. These two are polar opposite. They are totally different from each other. We are talking about hyperscale AI. And if you are asked to decide whether a hyperscale AI is a destructive creation or creative destruction, which one will be your answer? As you can see here, over 50 years or up to seven decades, you have been presented with this long cycle when it comes to capitalism. And this cycle was named after a Russian economist. Most economists do not buy this cycle. But no one can say for sure that this cycle is wrong and not correct. That is why this cycle has been cited among researchers and professors. Let's take a look at the tail. I think this is where we are positioned now. I think this is where we are witnessing hyperscale AI. That's my guess. Jinno Masahumi. He can be considered as a historic evangelist. He wrote a book called Game Changer in Japanese. I'm not sure whether it is translated into English. And he dealt with the birth of the humanity up until now, especially he focused on game-changing events. Let's take a look at them. There are 10 game-changing events. And the commission translated the 10 principles into Korean, and I like them pretty much. Number one is once a game change happens, there is no turning back. Number two.
anyone who goes against the flow of history, whether it be an individual or a company, is lost without exception. Number three, a new hegemonic power emerges between a game change and another game change. Number four, emerging knowledge before the game change becomes common knowledge after the game change. Number five, what is needed for game change is not invention itself, but commercialization and dissemination. That means you have to use it. Number six, once something unprecedented succeeds, it becomes a precedent and results in a game change. Number seven, it's interesting. There is, an, there is emergence of new knowledge, liberation of knowledge necessarily triggers game change. Number eight is also interesting. A new wave that triggers a game change always happens on the frontier. Uh, the commission uh, in, translated the frontier into something advanced, but it is actually frontier. And number nine is when a game change occurs, reactionary forces emerge that refuse to understand or accept it and artificially it tries to reverse it. Reactionary forces, when you hear that word, you may be reminded of communism. And number 10, it's not the size of the event, but the unprecedented signs of it that triggers a game change. And something that is unfit, you may consider it as a noise, but it is important to have a signal to track or trace the noise. I'm telling you these 10 principles of game change because I want to share with you the game change cases on that, it, that are next on the next slide. These are the historic game change cases presented by the author you saw on the previous slide. Number one was agriculture. I will give you time to read them. So let's pick what is related to content. That is number four, paper and booklets. And number nine, printing and uh, reformation. They brought knowledge liberation. And number 10, number 11, industrial revolution. And number 15, internet. Number 16, animation. And I said, and then, that means there is more. And the author didn't predict hyperscale AI. Hyperscale is a strong candidate for historic game change cases following internet and innovation. We are shifting from analog to digital, from generative AI to hyperscale AI. You already heard about them a lot from the previous speakers. This is a hypercurve introduced by Gartner. What is at the peak is hyper AI. And there is just something called foundation model or LLM. So we are at the peak. Let's follow the curve. Once you reach the peak, you will go down and you will go through adjustment and then you will go up again to be more productive. What is at the far right? 
computer vision. If you have ever visited a smart factory, you can call it a vision smart factory. It's just safe to call it smart vision factory. So we are on this on this hill. So adjustment has just started. And Professor Myungju Kim said this curve. And he also told us about how long it took for ChatGPT's 1 million users to be achieved and gained. When the whole market is 100, there is a 2.5% of a maniac or enthusiast. They are followed by early birds in combined if they are combined, they account for 60% of the market. And U.S. has a strength which encourages the country to test with this 16% of people in the market. If we talk about tests in the market, a country that is allowed to test with 16% of people is a negative country. And positive system refers to a system where about 80% of people are not allowed to be tested in the market freely. And this is related to diffusion theory. In regulation sandbox, it is open, often discussed in Korea in recent years. And how many users can be tested in Korea, even if we have a sandbox for regulation. I don't think it will be more than 1.6%. So there is this gap between Korea and other countries when it comes to user tests. Diffusion and dissemination determines game change. In other words, diffusion is most important. Some people call the era of AI an uh, infinite age of age of infinite creation and we are witnessing new knowledge and emergence of new knowledge let's put aside an issue of a copyright this is an age of infinite digital content and infinite creation by ai economists have long used the terminology called the gpt and the george schumpeter his students have used this terminology, and they saw the prime technologies of the human history as this equation. And the author called generative transformer a GP, GPT, and you will see many books entitled GPT. GPT stands for Generative Transformer. Generative Pre-trained Transformer. And another GPT, the GPT we are talking about in recent days is General Purpose Technology. So even though the acronyms are the same, the two have different meanings. So as I showed you this graph in on all your slides, we are there is this peak. If you look at capitalism, capitalism is a function of a bubble. It's a necessity, necessary evil. So now is the time for real competition to happen. The winners and losers are divided in the adjustment phase. That's what's scary. We can read it from this hyperscale curve. So Gartner touched upon these two internal innovation and external innovation created by generative AI. has always had wins against innovation. 
they can get in the way of innovation. And a headwind is like the reactionary force or a risk in math. And McKinsey produced excellent survey results. What are the risks of this in this age of hyperscale AI? You can rank them. Let's take a look at the top. Inaccuracy is the biggest risk, or it can be interpreted into high hallucination. It is followed by cybersecurity and intellectual property, which is the topic of this conference. Of course, there is a regulatory compliance. So what do you think of these words? Technology issues are topping the list. This means we are undergoing technological advancement. And the third thing, intellectual property infringement, regulatory compliance, they are related to legal issues. This is where we have to discuss more uh, issues. So how should we address the gap between the reality and the laws and regulations? There are different types of economists. Evolutionary economists, they see economy into three different things. One is physical technology. In another space, they see it's a social technology, which is laws and institutions. In these two spaces, we can add one more space, which is a space for entrepreneurs. When these three spaces are combined, a game change happens in this case, which is hyperscale AI. This is one of the perspectives I wanted to share with you in my presentation today. This is an article published by Watton Business School. It's just a matter of degree that all companies are taking advantage of AI at a company-wide level, not at a local level. A to Z from a corporation cannot be free from AI. So companies are asked to go through a revolution and a corporation's cash cow or business models or competitive edge have been challenged because of AI, and even they have to accept cannibalization. Destroying your existing business model is easier said than done. Let's Take a look at the failure and collapse of a giant label. We talked about signs and diffusion, and events happen out of changes. You already heard about them on previous slides. When we were young, a label but overseas was a great gift for someone in Korea. In Napster, it was nobody in the past. And there was a lawsuit for piracy regarding Napster. But there are many cases that you can see that this label cannot be a winner in the history, even though it can win a lawsuit. During the litigation, we saw the emergence of another big tech giant called Apple. It was totally unexpected. So a new hegemonic power emerged. This is what, what I want you to focus on. When we talk about hyperscale AI or generative AI, we always face and encounter theories that makes us scared. 
One is a tragedy of commons. And no one will create new work in the Asia with hyperscale AI, according to concerns of some people, and copyrighted copyright will be infringed often, and originality will be disappear and destroyed. But economists look at this different way, in a different way. There is a market for piracy, and there will be another real market for creative work. For companies, there is a market for generative AI, and another market for real creativity. So what do corporations need to do? They have to segment the markets. But we end up thinking about only one market, only one rule, or only one copyright. Copyright was introduced about 300 years ago. But copyright has been segmented. Actually, copyright should be segmented to keep up with trends in recent years. So when we talk about digital content industrial policy, we should think about how we can address the gap between change and existing laws. Yes, what was pointed out by previous speakers, I agree with that. And copyright is a serious issue. Some people say it is an era of a copyright nightmare. Some people didn't want to discuss it openly. And the professor from Emory University School of Law, actually the professor made a good point. We don't use uh, trend data when we learn. We use abstraction of data, and there is hallucination happening and inaccuracy happening. So that is inherently creating an issue of a copyright. So how do we handle it? If it is an exclusive copyright infringement, it is easy. But if we have to train the machine by admitting that it is a proper proprietary asset, it is easy. And the uh, uh, learning method will be federated method if copyright is protected and that is ensured. That's just my personal opinion. And I talked about the speed of change in speed of change especially of existing laws. There is a communist country. There is European Union. So the gap between reality and existing law, how do you address that? And some speaker previously talked about giving a grace period. That is one option. And we can let uh, corporations have some internal regulations, and we cannot meet those internal regulations. And that will encourage companies to voluntarily compete against each other. And that is called norm at Google. We should do something. Changes are happening, and companies cannot just sit on their hands and do nothing. So they have to create norms, and the no norms should be accepted by our society at the National Assembly, for example, in Korea. So what can the government do? The government, the society, and corporations, they should create social trust. There is some countries they can build this trust. Other countries, they will make their relevant laws and regulations stricter. So this is the fundamental question we need to ask. So which value chain does Korea want to be at? 
That's the question we need to ask right now. I think the word economics will be gone. And this is replaced by AI comics, economics. So all prepositions and prerequisitions are breaking down. And productivity created by generative AI. Do you think they can translate it into the existing definition of a productivity or a growth rate? The way to calculate growth rates or productivity was created about 100 years ago in the US. So how do we integrate growth or productivity created by AI? If we don't interpret this right, they can, uh, it can distort exact project prediction of growth rates or productivity. We are debating over hyperscale AI. The outcome will vary depending on individuals or countries. That's what's scary. So we don't know whether we are we will be at the front or we will be at the tail. Many Koreans read this book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, right after the Asian financial crisis. And the book classifies dads into four types, employee, self-employed, business creator, investor. What are the two, first two deaths? They earn money by working hard. What about the other two? They employ other people to make a living. So is there any guarantee that there will be no gap between these types of debt? The same logic can be applied to countries, governments, and even families. So I wanted to ask this question, where does Korea want to be at in this value chain? I'm not going to go into detail. The balance between labor and leisure, let's talk about it. The rest, you can read it later. When Great Depression took place in the 1920s, when economists came forward and addressed the issue. And he wrote an essay for the grandchildren's generation. And he said in his essay, 100 years later, which is now, our grandchildren will have to work only 15 hours a week, three hours a day for five days a week. And there will be enough for them to make a living and prosper. Do you think we work less in this digital age? I think we are working more, twice more in this digital age. But this economist didn't predict we will have AI in the future. On my way home after work, I can ask AI to work for me. And when I wake up in the morning, I can check whether my work is done or AI got the job done. There is a labor-created content and le leisure-created content. So we spend more time in leisure over time in labor. I think there will be explosion in con content. So you often say art imitates reality, but I think the vice versa is true. Our life is trying to express something which is in the form of content. And we were told that human beings are social animals, but I think Human beings are in solidar uh, are lonely. So we are transitioning into an era. Everything will change. As I wrote on the slide, 
I think this Asia I predicted is coming. It will arrive soon. We often talk about platform economy. We often think about big tax only. But let's say every individual in this room is a small tech. Small tech is very powerful. Let's imagine that every one of you has an AI agent for you. And big tech cannot beat AI agents. So your AI agent will negotiate and engage in transactions. And all the apps on your smartphone will be gone, according to some people, if we have an AI agent for everyone. And the economy will be in a different shape and form in the future. There is a high possibility that we will shift to protocol economy. And a new ecosystem will be created. So I suggested these ideas at the national level. Generally, let's imagine the future of the humanity. So what issues should we discuss? We will face a content-oriented capitalism, and that should be created in a way that will favor us. We don't want any capitalism form that presents authoritarianism. So what issues should we address? This is a task for us to carry out. We have been concerned about the collision between the US and China. And I want to tell you this fact. The collision between the US and China is declining. How much is the US GDP to 25 trillion? And if it is combined with the GDP of China, it is about 43 trillion. Right after Second World War, the U.S. accounted for more than 50 percent of global GDP. The global population is 8 billion, and U.S. population is 340 million, and Chinese population is 9 mil billion. So the two countries' population combined is only 1.4 billion. Korean people have some complex inferiority when it comes to English. Let's say how many people in the world are speaking Chinese? Only 2.8 billion people around the world are speaking English every day. The rest of the global population is speaking more than hundreds of different languages. I'm telling you this statistic because the US-China collision is only a part of phenomena we are witnessing in the world. Can you distinguish language from knowledge? Language and knowledge are part of our evolution. This is ex explosion of knowledge. This is explosion of content. I think digital content industry is one of the most promising industries in the world. Then how should we create the digital content industry? We have no choice but to think about the division between human beings and AI. This is a very important issue. The content industry can be created by humans only or AI only. And AI can do specific jobs while humans can do other types of specific jobs. A Japanese professor wrote this idea recently. And the professor is witnessing generative AI's emergence. And he argued that we are shifting from science and technology to art. So this is his prediction. This is a very meaningful prediction. There is AI-driven content and 
human-driven content. I don't know what is the clear uh, division between the two, but we have to think about the issue of authorship. So these issues will not be defined and dealt by the conventional definition of a copyright. And the professor's name is Kunji. Uh, Margaret Fudan is a cognis, uh, cognition researcher. And she divided this creation in the age of AI. One is com a combinatorial creation like never before, and the other is exploratory creation by expanding search space. And you are seeing three different things on the slide. They may look different, and I think number three is most important. But the problem is whether we are trained to accept number three. Can we evolve into accepting number three? And I found Ms. Florden's idea very interesting. I'm going to skip the next slide because I already described that on previous slides. What do you think will be next game changes? I'd like to talk about text-based content. We used to rely on text to create content. It was a linear content creation. And then that was followed by video or animation. YouTube was in wide use, or multimodal platform was in wide use. So we are, I believe, reaching the peak of multimodal platforms. And we will encounter techno image era. This is not my argument. This was argued by Mr. Flosser. Actually, he died in the 1990s. In his book, he argued that techno imagination era will come. So hyperscale AI era will be followed by techno imagination, according to this author. And he emphasized this word, literacy. Once we can ensure literacy, we can usher in techno imagination era. This is a very difficult idea, so I couldn't fully understand the idea. So next game change will be in the form of techno imagination. Is content everything? You can read the text on the slide. This is the conclusion. I've talked about evolution of digital content at the national level. That is why I told you the history of game change cases. Anthropologists say real advancement is about accepting diverse perspective. Not just only one perspective. Accepting diverse perspectives is real advancement. So The future we want is not where only a single individual or single company dominates the world. It is a world where diversity is accepted. Thank you very much, Professor Hyunsil An. He told us about the history of game-changing cases, and he presented a specific perspective. Thank you so much.